Anyway, with that in mind, take it away, Carolyn. And okay, well, we're starting to have fun now. All right, we're going to go into round two. Again, I'm going to read the, um, the rules. Each candidate will have 75 seconds to present your introduction statement. Each candidate receives a distinctive question in this session. After responding, other candidates, by raising their hand and being recognized, will have a rebuttal of one, one minute. Subsequently, the initial candidate who answered the question is granted a 30 seconds rebuttal. Each candidate will deliver their closing statement, starting with the, can the candidate position on the left of the stage, following to the, to the right, and that will also be 30, 75 seconds. Following the debate, the audience have given questions to the candidates during a 15 minute town hall session. The moderators once again will review them. It is our, our authority, our decision, and then we will screen them by, by each one of us and, and make the selection. <coughs> okay, we're ready. <coughs> Okay, so um, Tracy, why don't you go ahead and start introducing yourself, please. Okay, that was probably about 10 seconds. Pardon me? Okay, is this better? All right. I'm Tracy Hilton Thomas. I am a homegrown girl. I was uh, raised in Fallon until my family moved to Sparks in uh, 1976, graduated from Reed, I graduated from Truckee Meadows Community College and UNR. I've had uh, 20 years experience in our Washoe County elections, working them and uh, actually training voters in 2020. I uh, brought some of the issues with some of the processes and procedures to the attention of the commissioners and I was blackballed from participating in those elections any further. And then I got involved with uh, Commissioner Herman, asked me to help her with some of her resolutions, and that led me down to a path where I am now the vice chair of um, Washoe County Republican Party. And so I have got a command on Robert's Rules of Orders, and um, I have got another, a, a lot of contacts within the county that I get a little bit of information from. And my husband is a retired sheriff deputy. Our son is a current active sheriff deputy. And the girls are dispatchers for Washoe County and Reno. So we get to know a lot of information at the holidays. Thank you. Good evening. For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Mark Lawson, and I'm running for Washoe County Commission District 4. I'd like to quickly recognize Mr. Conrad, Mr. Roca, the moderators, and Red Moon Nevada for the hosting this event. I am truly honored to be here tonight, and I quickly would like to recognize my wife, Melissa, who's my biggest fan and supporter. She's right there behind me. For those of you who aren't familiar with my background, I've spent the majority of my life, or just over three decades, in public safety, both as an executive level chief officer within two different fire departments, and as a police officer in both California and here in Nevada. If you haven't already guessed it, I take great pride in the fact that God has truly blessed me with an occupation where I've been able to serve the citizens within California and right here in the state of Nevada. I'm a native Nevadan who was born and raised in Sparks, Nevada. I attended elementary, middle, and high school right here in the city of Sparks, and I'm proud to say I'm also a Reed Raider alumni. As a former community leader, I've always relied on the principles, honesty, integrity, and transparency. Always be slow to speak and quick to listen, while remembering service before oneself. I truly believe these principles have prepared me to serve as Washoe County, it to serve Washoe County and Northern Nevada as a future commissioner for District 4, and, I, and with your support, I'll get that chance. Thanks. Good evening, my name is Marcia Burke Bigler, and actually most of the time I don't need this microphone because people say I have a loud voice. <clears throat> but I will use it tonight because it's fun to use the microphone. I am 
running for Washoe County District seat one. And um, I am really excited about getting back into this again. As many of you may know, I served two terms, and so I do have a voting record. You can go look it up. It's mo Most of it is posted on my website. Um, and I am a conservative Reagan Republican. So I go back a few years. I've been in Nevada. In <laughs> I've been in northern Nevada since 1959. So I... I claim residency, a, a natural regi residency to the city of Reno. I, what you get when you, when you work with me is you get honesty, integrity, you get uh, total transparency. I do not believe what is going on with our government across the nation, certainly not just in Nevada, but what is going on with our government right now at the county level is dangerous, it's frightening, Thank goodness we have um, uh, Commissioner Clark and Commissioner Herman because they are trying to do the right thing and that's what I will do when you elect me. Thank you. Well, good evening everybody. My name is Eugene Hoover and I am a long time small business owner. Retired about four or five years ago. Uh, ran my own business, transportation company here in Nevada for about 28 years. And the state of Nevada, in its wisdom, attempted to put through the commerce tax. This pretty much got me riled up to the point where I was willing to get involved in politics. And I traveled around the state and did what I could to try to prevent the commerce tax from being passed. You know, at the end of the day, I was standing there in the legislature when they went ahead and passed that bill. And uh, the person that uh, basically defeated me, because I had run for uh, state uh, senate at the time, uh, made the, basically the deciding vote was cast uh, and, and passed the commerce tax. And uh, if you want to know any more, more about the commerce tax and why it's so handsome, we won't have to tell you later. Um, I am married, have a, a beautiful wife, it's an RN. I have five children in this community. And uh, I, I think that it's important uh, that we put a small business owner on the county commission and let's see what we can do about cleaning that mess up and let's put some trust back into the county commission. Thanks. Thank you very much. Barb, I'll have you ask the first question. Okay, Tracy, this is uh, going to be addressed to you. The board of county commissioners make, make, I'm sorry, the board of county commissioners may make a grant of money to a nonprofit organization credited for religious, charitable, or educational purposes, or to a government entity to be expended for a selected purpose up to $100,000 per commissioner. Would you vote to continue this practice in this amount? Uh, no, I don't think that is a good practice. I think we need to be uh, spending well, I think we need to be spending the money more wisely on things that we need as far as our infrastructure, our seniors, our veterans. We need to get that CARES campus under control. There, we need to be pausing any more investment into that. And that's where a lot of these grants are going is to some of the entities in there, which I'm not saying they're not legitimate, but we need to have some type of audit to see what we're doing and what's been going on so far. Um, I do think it should be something that maybe um, these uh, nonprofits should put in a request for, and then then the, the panel, the commissioners as a whole, could vote on which ones they would like to do the grants, because there's a certain commissioner that continually grants to the same uh, nonprofit all the time. Thank you. Okay, Mark, would you like to have a, a rebuttal? Uh, you're going to hear me say this all night, fiscal accountability. I, I mean, we need to be more accountable and keep, be watchdogs over our budget. I've seen so much wasteful spending in government, it, it sickens me. And I can tell you, the things that we need to be a, a, accountable for is, in fact, what we're, what we're paying for. I mean, I'd like to see the budget. I've heard that the, some of the county commissioners don't even see the budget to approve it. I want, I, they should have early budget meetings to discuss it, make it very transparent. You're going to, thank you. You're going to hear me. There. Oh. Sorry, it's just too much feedback. But in a budget, you should be able to look at that. You have pre preliminary or budget hearings, and you look at this stuff, and you go through with a fine-tooth comb, 
and you become very fiscally accountable. So you're going to hear me say that all night, and I don't, I don't believe in wasteful spending, and, and I've seen too many programs that there is wasteful spending. So fiscal accountability, you're going to hear me say it all night. Thank you. Marsha? Thank you. I absolutely agree with that. One of the things that always worried me when we were when I was on the commission before was that very frequently these donations were made and they go on the consent agenda and the, the even the commissioners are not aware of it unless they go research it on their own. They may not even see all the documentation behind it. And I definitely think we need to be more accountable with taxpayer dollars. The money, you've heard me say this before, you'll hear me say it a dozen times, Governments don't have money, people have money. And they pay money in the form of taxes and fees to the governments so that the governments can then do a service for them. Not so that the governments can spend the money any way they want it spent. And that is something that needs to be looked at and I think this is one of the projects that we really could take on if we had control on the commission. Thank you. Eugene? Well, I think I agree with pretty much everybody up here. Uh, the commissioner should not have $100,000 uh, to spend. Um, it needs to go through the normal process. It needs to go to the, the commission. And uh, visibility, you know, accountability and visibility. And, and that's what I would agree with, and I would take that away. And Tracy, you now get to make another final comment if you would care to. Well, I, get, I guess I would just say there's, there's so much, I mean, when the top management just all got raises over 10%, I mean, one assistant manager just received $60,000 raise in January, but now they're telling us they don't have enough, they might not have enough money for our budget this year. Something's not right there. Thank you. Thank, thank you to all of you. Mr. Larson. Question goes to you. It's lost, I'm sorry. Our local county budget exceeds two to three times that of every of other counties in the United States of similar size. A, what would you propose to reduce the budget? B, if you would not propose to reduce the budget, what would you propose? So first, excuse me, first part, I, what did I just say? You're going to hear me echo it again. Fiscal accountability. It's crazy. I can't believe what budget, what the budget is, and, and for this size of county, too. Again, wasteful spending. Uh, we need to be, we need to get out ahead of this. You lead from the front, not from the rear. Proactive versus reactive. I mean, I, I've seen all kinds of wasteful spending. You talk about uh, what they're spending on the CARES campus, 120 million. I mean, I'm shooting from the hip here. I know it's close. And you give our seniors, what? 20 million? I mean, that's, that's wrong. To what, in the back, to whatever yeah, it is. Right. Seven million, there you go. It, it's, it's totally inadequate. I mean, th this is what I'm talking about, fiscal accountability. People need to take a close look at this. And you need more involvement. Bring the, co bring the commission a sensible budget and quit wasting taxpayer dollars. Uh, thank you. One of the things that I would do is I would immediately take a look at the team that is managing the CARES campus and where their offices are located and downsize them back to where uh, the rest of the commission or the rest of the county staff are. Um, that office is expensive where they're at. I, I'm not going to quote the exact numbers because I know I quoted them once before and and immediately I got a call and said, well, so that's not exactly right. Uh, it's, we do this or we do that. But that's one area that needs to be looked at, and, and it should be addressed immediately. There's no reason for that staff to have a fancy office that costs a great deal of money when that money could be used to benefit the senior kitchen at, the, at just the Ninth Street facility. If they just downsized that one office and move the people back, there's a lot of money in that. And again, it's fiscal responsibility. Yeah, I, I agree with everybody here. The first thing we gotta start with is an audit. We need to know where the money's being spent. We need to figure that out first. And, and with the transparency that we are willing to provide uh, to the commission, I think that there'd be a lot of, uh, a lot of dollars that'd be very obvious of what we should be doing. Uh, you know, I, 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 
say the same thing everybody else has done up here, and that is the seniors are, are not getting a fair shake here. And it seems like the, the CARES campus is getting all the attention and all the money, and uh, we have far more seniors in this community than we do homeless. Wait, we're going to let Tracy first do a rebuttal, then we'll go to you. Thank you. Come on, Mark, give me my turn. <laughs> well, first thing I would like to do is to um, examine the organizational structure. We are very, very, very top heavy. Every time you see the agenda, they're hiring another manager. And it's usually not somebody that's being promoted from up within. They are going outside and hiring folks. We have a Currently, we have a chief information officer that resides in the Bay Area, and he's our chief CIO for Washoe County. We pay for his salary to live in the Bay Area. He doesn't even live here. So that's one thing, just to start, not that I have an opinion on that. But there are, um, there's a lot of bottom level employees that are capable of doing work. First of all, we do not need a registrar of voters. We proved in the 2022 elections that they did it with a deputy registrar. The registrar's office needs to be moved underneath the clerk's office and get rid of the registrar altogether. We can hold our clerk accountable. Okay, Mr. Lawson, your turn. Yeah, just real quick, too. You heard me say public safety earlier. That takes up a lion's share of any budget, especially in local government. I'm an expert at this, and duplication of resources is very evident. I think we can save a ton of money by taking a good look at regionalization or consolidation of resources. Thank you. Next question. This one's a little bit long, but it's important. Since commissioners appoint the library board, what is your position on the following issue? In a citizen audit, of the libraries in Washoe County, inappropriate aged books were shown to be available to children K through 12. Passages from some of these books have caused presenters' microphones to be shut off because the material was not suitable for broadcast. The same books are in the Washoe County libraries for our children to read. What action should be taken with these books? Thank you, that is a really, really valuable and important question, and one I'm glad that I get the chance to answer. I am not in any way uh, in favor of banning books. I am in favor of making sure that books that are, have inappropriate language do not get, in, or pictures or whatever else they have, do not get in the hands of our children. If you are a parent and you want your child to see that, that's your business. And I'm not trying to tell you you can't have your children read that kind of stuff if that's what you want. But I don't want my children seeing that. I don't want my grandchildren or my soon-to-be great-grandchild seeing that kind of stuff. And if that stuff is just openly available in the library it, where the children have access to it, that needs to be changed. That needs to be stopped immediately. And if that takes getting rid of the director of the library board, Perhaps that's the step that the county needs to take. Thank you, Mrs. Goldberger. Mr. Hoover. Rebuttal? I'm here. All right. What do you got? Well, I would be disgusted to know that those books are there, and I would do everything I could to get those books removed, including removing the people that are appointed you know, in, in the uh, library system. Just that simple. Mrs. Thomas. Okay, I worked for, um, actually when I worked at Washoe County from 1997 to 2015, I worked in the technology services department. This was a battle we had with the library. County employees are not allowed. We actually block all the sites for them to go out to anything that could be considered obscene or inappropriate non-business. They're no, they're, and that same threshold was held for our libraries, but then they pushed and pushed and pushed with this Freedom of Information Act. But the thing of it is, it's not about having freedom to that information. You can go online and get that information if you want. Taxpayers do not need to be funding pedophiles and people that have problems with obscene 
that is just feeding a, what do I want to call it? It's feeding a, a weakness, and I don't think we need to be doing that to our community. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. I'm all for Freedom of Information Act, but I can tell you what, it sounds like there needs to be a replacement at the library director's position because that is atrocious. If those were my kids, I would be appalled. So whether they put them somewhere in some corner that's only accessible to kids that are 18, or adults that are 18 years and older, fine. But otherwise, I say get rid of them. And you know, I was a former firefighter and I was able to light fires legally. You know what I do with those books. Thank you. Mrs. Burke Bigler, do you have anything to add? Marsha, got anything you want to add? No, you good? Okay. And folks, don't forget if you have any questions for the candidates up here, please get them in to us so we can add them for the town hall. Okay, so this question is for Eugene. What is the number one problem in the county that must be resolved, and how will you get it resolved before the end of your term? Trust. The community doesn't have the trust in the county commission anymore. You just see the folks showing up to the meeting and how irate they get, but they don't get their questions answered. They don't, they don't get uh, a fair redress of the issue. So it's trust. And the, how I would get trust back? Build a coalition. Build a coalition so that everything that happens at that commission is very transparent. We need to bring that back. That way everybody gets to understand the issues and everybody will be able to understand why the commission is doing whatever it's doing and none of this backdoor dealing stuff. Tracy? Okay, I strongly believe, I mean, I know in District 4 everybody complains about the traffic on Pyramid, but the other big thing that's a big topic right now is the homeless supposed crisis. We do not have a homeless crisis. We have a opioid crisis. It's still there, it was there before COVID. It didn't just magically go away. When they reported the 135 houseless residents that passed away in 2023, nobody dug down to the bottom statistics. Only two of those deaths were caused by exposure to the elements, hyperthermia. Three were caused by hyperthermia and drug overdoses. 66 deaths were due to drug overdoses. Nine deaths were from vehicles and trains. I think there was eight deaths that were homicides. So they're not reporting the numbers correctly. There were not 135 folks that died because they did not have a home. There was home people that died because they were addicted to drugs and they can't get the help they want in that center. First of all, expose corruption and be more transparent. But on all due serious, I attended the uh, Citizens Advisory Board last night in Spanish Springs. The number one priority in the county was regionalization of, uh, of emergency resources, true auto aid. What that means is the closest resource responds to, to the person calling the 911 in the least amount of time. I'm truly an expert at this. I'll keep saying it because I feel I'm well versed. Bottom line, there's nothing more important than the public safety. Your safety, your children's safety, the safety of your family. And if we're duplicating resources, or there's a piece of apparatus that's responding through somebody else's jurisdiction because it doesn't happen to be their area of turf, that's mismanagement, complete mismanagement. We can do better. And I can tell you when it comes to essential services, when I'm talking about EMS, that's a difference of life and death. Minutes save lives, period. It needs to get done and it doesn't take two years to do it either. Especially with me, thank you. stand up also. Um, there's so many that there's not enough time for me to even talk about all, all the ones that, that really concern me. But the number one issue, and I agree with all, all of these, I think all of these issues are definitely top issues, but the number one issue to me is a severe lack of transparency. The people don't know what the county staff is doing and a lack of communication between the commissioners who are responsible to each one of you, to all of us, the commissioners who are responsible to us, the lack of communication to those commissioners about what other commissioners are doing or what the county staff is doing has to be fixed. That's the number one issue I'd work on. Eugene, you get another crack at the apple. Yes, please. 
you know, it goes right back to what I said a few minutes ago. What we need to do here is we need to have accountability at the county, and I think that's what everybody else up here agrees with as well. The accountability will allow for the trust to come back to the county commission that we don't have right now, and we need the citizens to have that trust. It's the only way we're going to get things done. It's the only way we're going to work cooperatively, and that's what I think that we should do. It's simple as that. Thank you, panel. I'd like to just let, let you know. Oh, I'm. It was Eugene's question. Thank you for asking, though, Tracy. So I just want to let you know what's going to happen next. We're going to go into a lightning round, and it's lightning, meaning you'll each get one one minute. We'll go into the town hall. We have received a, a, a couple of questions here. Perhaps we'll get more. And then we'll go into letting you have your closing statements. I'm going to let Mr. Beatles lead the um, lightning round. Thank you. Thank you. So each of you will have one minute to respond. You guys all get to respond to the same, same question. So you get four questions. Each of you get to answer it. First one, start with Tracy. This is Thomas. Would you vote for a resolution to support Jackie Rosen's Land Management Act, which will affect the ranchers and recreationalists in Washoe County? Nope, not at this time. Uh, I think there's too much um, development as it is right now. I think we need to be putting a pause on that until our infrastructure catches up with what we've got out there. It's a freaking zoo in District 4. And so, no, right now I'd have to say no, I'd have to say no. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lawson. Again, I would not support that. Poor planning already. Um, you know, it's obvious. I said, told people if I had hair, I'd pull it out. I sat on Pyramid Lake Highway every single day and I sit there for 45, 50 minutes to get into town. It's horrible. Again, you gotta get out in front of this thing. I mean, you, you be proactive, not reactive. You need to have the infrastructure in place before you start thinking about additional buildings. So, no, I don't support it. <laughs> Mrs. Burke-Pigwood. Thank you, I actually don't support it either. I did have the opportunity to kind of dig through it and, and look at it, and um, I have some concerns, some serious concerns about some of the things that are in there. You know, there, there, historically there have been land spills going on for a long time. And I know Senator Reed back in the day had one that would impact Northern Nevada. <clears throat> and I think, I, I don't remember it now, but I think it had some things in it that might have been beneficial. But so much of this bill appears not to have been vetted with the citizens who would be directly impacted by it. So I couldn't support it. Thank you. Mr. Hoover. Yeah, I'm, I'm with everybody else up on this. Um, it, the lack of infrastructure, you know, every 10 years we're told that uh, we're running out of water, and now every month we're told we're going to run out of sewer capacity. Uh, these issues need to be fixed first. They need to be addressed first. And when they are, then let's take another look at perhaps expanding uh, the footprint of the city and the county uh, and get rid of some of the BLM land. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of BLM land in, in this state. And yes, it would be nice if the county could have some of those uh, properties put on the tax rolls and we could expand perhaps if once we get our act together and are expanding in a more reasonable fashion, uh, perhaps we could utilize that. Thank you, Mr. Hoover. All right, the next question, start off with Mrs. Thomas. Would you vote for the adoption of an ordinance to identify a lobbyist when providing public comment at a county commission meeting? Would you vote, so would you vote for the adoption of an ordinance to identify a lobbyist when providing public comment at the county commission meeting? I don't think I, I don't think we need to really identify them. They identify themselves just by their comments. So no, I don't think I would vote for a policy to actually force them to sign stuff, whatever, because um, you can tell by their public comments that who they're in favor for. So I think it's a waste of time of staff, hours, and paper. Thank you. Mr. Lawson? Real simple, no. Okay. I would not support an ordinance that they have to say who they are. 
expose them? No, absolutely not. Thank you. Mrs. Burt Bigger. No, I would not support such an ordinance. Thank you. Mr. Hoover? I would not support it as well. It's just harassment. Uh, every citizen should have a voice and everybody should be able to have their voice uh, heard. Thank you. All right, next question. Mrs. Thomas, would you vote to give the county manager or any other personnel within the county the authority to make expenditures to purchase supplies, materials, equipment, and contractual services per vendor contract up to $300,000 without commissioner approval? Absolutely not. I think $100,000 was adequate for what they need to do at the moment. Anything over that is, is an investment, and we need to know before they go in and spend our taxpayers' money, because we are the ones that are accountable to the voters, not them. So we need to know, we need to approve it. Thank you. Mr. Lawson. What's the word? Fiscal accountability again. And $100,000 was just fine. There's no need for $300,000. And it needs to come before the commission. You increase that, they vote on that. There's no need to go higher than $100,000. Thanks. Thank you. Mrs. burke -Bigger. No, I, I don't agree with that. We, when I was there before, it was $100,000. And, you know, that, that's fair. I understand there are some expenditures that they need to do, but what, why, why 300000 Why did they pick that number? And if it's going to be 300000 why not 500000 Will it continue to go up? I just am opposed to that. I think the commissioners are responsible to the constituents, and the constituents have a right to know where their money is being spent. Thank you. Mr. Hoover. Yeah, I, I would get rid of that as well. And it should be done like a, a normal business would be. And, and that is basically you take each department and it's based on the department itself of how much funds would be available. You know, for instance, office supplies, you're going to get up a pretty good idea. If you're spending $1,000 or $4,000 a month, those sorts of expenditures is fine. Uh, but, you know, you start getting into the big ticket items that shouldn't be. But it should be done by uh, basically by category uh, more than anything. But I, I, if I had to shoot from the hip, I'm pretty sure we'd be talking about $100,000 because uh, the, the, the citizens put the commissioners in place to make those decisions and to make the decisions based on what the citizens want. And the only way to do that is to reduce that amount down. Thank you. Right, Mrs. Thomas, this is the last question for the lightning round before we get into the town hall questions. Would you vote to spend less money on the CARES campus and more on senior support efforts? <laughs> Obviously, yes, I would. Um, I, again, I do not think that the CARES campus is being run efficiently or according to the needs of this community or the occupants that are inside that tent. Those occupants need help for mental issues and drug issues. The homeless issues are actually already being addressed by other communities in our, our other services in our community, some nonprofits. Um, I, the senior center is way outdated for this, this valley. Um, there needs to be more than just one center. There needs to be multiple centers. There needs to be more down south. There needs to be more up north. Um, and they need to be more uh, meeting the needs of the seniors for today. They're not even meeting the seniors' needs for today. We don't even have affordable housing for our seniors. We only have like 1,200 apartments or in affordable housing units for them. So that needs, to, out of a, a population of 500,000 people, we have an inventory of about 218,000 residents and only 1,200 of those are affordable. That's not right. Thank you. Mr. Lawson. Alternative funding sources. Yes, the homeless issue is a big deal and lots of money is being spent on the CARES campus. But fresh revenue sources, grants, there's other alternative means of, of acquiring funds. When you talk about seniors, it's so lopsided, it's a joke. I had the f fortune of going with uh, Commissioner Clark to a couple of the senior uh, centers and sat down for lunch with them. And I gotta be honest with you, the food that they were feeding them, I, I, I've seen better food on the plates of prisoners and illegals. It's a complete joke. It's a joke. Th those are my parents. I feel sorry for those people in there. Those seniors need more help, a lot more help, and that's a priority for me. So I, no more money for, for CARES Campus and lots more for our seniors. Thank you. Thank you. This is Bert Bigger. 
Yes, I totally agree with that. I, I, there's no question that we need to quit spending so much money on the CARES campus and on the homeless issue entirely. I believe in equitable spending for the seniors and the homeless. Yes, we have homeless issues. And yes, we have to do something because of all the things Christopher Dare talked about earlier. We do have those responsibilities and we need to be there. But we don't need to do that at the risk of our seniors. And our seniors do not get good food. The senior centers could be, the kitchens need to be upgraded. The, uh, there, there needs to be better transportation. The list is long and, and really sad about what we're doing to the seniors. And so I truly believe that it's time to stop, to, to audit the CARES campus, audit all of the money that's going on there, stop spending so much money in that arena, find ways to save money and spend more money on senior care. Thank you. Mr. Hoover. Once again, I agree with the board. I mean, we're, we're spending way too much money on the CARES campus and not enough seniors. I mentioned it earlier here a few minutes ago. And the audit would really help. And you know, one of the themes up here, every, almost everybody up here said, is we need accountability, we need some clarity, we need to put some sunlight on all these expenditures that the county has. And a way to do that is to get another Republican elected to this commission. So I'd hope that you'd help me out there. Thank you. Thank you. We're now gonna move on to the town hall questions, the questions from the audience, and we'll start off with Barb. Each of you will have one minute to answer the same question. So we'll start with Barb. Thank you, thank you, Robert. And there will be no rebuttal. Okay, so um, Tracy, I guess this will go to you. What do you think of Commissioner Hill canceling the next meeting because she will be out of town? Commissioner Herman is vice chair and should be chairing the meeting in Hill's absence. Yeah, I've been a little vocal on that in my emails. Uh, and yeah, it's BS, um, to be polite. Uh, there is no reason. The only reason why they are canceling it is because they are trying to prevent her from chairing a meeting. It is so black and white. It's so obvious. There's no other reason. Uh, Mark? If you're not gonna use your vice chair, why even have one? I mean, you, she's right here, you have a quorum. <laughs> You continue with the meeting. It's that simple. That's why you have a vice chair. Exactly what my, my opponent just said. I mean, I think they're just afraid that she's actually going to have her chance at, you know, chairing the meeting. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious what they're doing here. Well, I wish it was that simple that she was just afraid that Jean would do a good job as chair. I think it's much more um, devious than that. I think the uh, Madam Chair did this because she wants to control everything that's happening on the County Commission. And uh, that's not her job. The other commissioners all have equality to her. She's just the chair of the meeting. And what she does, what she says, what she thinks is no more val of value than any of the other commissioners. And I, I, that, I think, is offensive that she canceled this meeting. And I understand that she canceled it unilaterally, so it wasn't even like taking a poll of the other commissioners to see if they were okay with it. That's just wrong. I'm sorry, especially because this particular meeting had some hot and heavy issues on it that constituents were really looking forward to discussing. And so she, she, there were all these people who had plans to be there, and she just pulled the chair out from underneath the boat. That's wrong. You know, I think, once again, we all agree, and, and it comes down to very simply that we need to replace these people, and that's why we need all of you out there to help us out. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy, we'll start with you once again. The question from my audience is, how can our county get rid of drag queen story hour at our libraries? Well, uh, right now, we can't do any of these great things that we all talk about that we want to do until we get our elections cleaned up. We need to have our elections meeting the NRS statutes. Right now, we are violating at least a dozen statutes, uh, particularly the ones that they just created for mail ballots on uh, NRS 293.2699, I think it's 35 or something. They used to only have three numbers after the dot, but now there's like six. So. 
Anyway, it specifically states that you are not to release any count information about mail ballots until election day or after the last ballot is cast. So why are they reporting all through early voting how many mail ballots they have received from each party? I can see maybe giving them a little grace. They can report how many mail ballots you've received, but you cannot break that down de be depending on nonpartisans, Democrats, or Republicans. Mr. Larson. I can tell you why they have these kind of events. Um, it's because what Commissioner Clark was speaking of earlier, it's that other person that should have been up here debating with us tonight that votes 87% of the time with the Democrats. That's why we have those kind of events. Because if I was on that commission, that wouldn't take place because we'd be 3-2. Thank you. Marsha. I think the best way to fix that problem is to get rid of the executive director. But yes, it should, it should be. It's a problem that needs to be resolved sooner rather than later. We're right back where we were. We need to replace those folks on the, on the school board, I'm sorry, on the uh, library board. And we'll get people in there that, you know, that, that basically respect, uh, if not tradition, the law. Thank you, Mr. Hoover. And you were right on both accounts, school board and the library board, <laughs> except for Jeff Church. Right? <laughs> All right, back to the, uh, the audience's questions. We'll start with uh, Tracy Thomas. We heard each of you discuss fiscal responsibility and accountability. Will each of you officially go on the record right now as to immediately initiating a forensic, a forensic fiscal audit by an outside independent third party with oversight if elected? And if you need me to repeat it, just let me know. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a forensic audit of our election machines or election results? I have a feeling they're talking about the budget as well as the elections. So. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, yeah. Uh, there's, there's plenty of areas that need auditing besides the CARES campus. Also, our elections need to be audited, and we need to find a buyer for all the machines because we do not need them. We can do it by hand and do it at a local level to ha get all of our votes counted. And then, of course, the, I talked about the technology services department already. That needs to be audited and cleaned out. Um, there's just a lot of cleaning house. I, I think there was a, Mr. Isdale said that if one of us was appointed, other than Clara, that there was going to be a, a mass exodus of employees at the county. My opinion on that is good. It just saves us from terminating them. Thank you. Just go awesome. Sounds like a BOGO. Buy one, get one. I say hire them and go through both audits, a comprehensive audit. Uh, first of all, you know, like I said, wasteful spending, fiscal accountability, yes. We need to audit that budget and make sure that those, are, those appropriations are going to the right programs. Second, the, the voting process, that's broken too. We spoke about it, paper ballots, you know, and, and getting the, doing, going, going back to, to what worked before. I mean, we used to vote the same day voting. We would know who won that day. No machines. Just go back to what works. If the wheel's not broken, don't fix it. So we need an audit, and yes, we need to ramp, revamp both. Thank you. Thank you. This is Brooke Bigler. Yes, I go on record supporting the audit of both. The, actually, any place in the, in the county, I, I've already said I think that care, the CARES campus without question needs to be audited. Um, if we need to do a full forensic audit of the budget, that's an important issue. That money belongs to you, and you should know where it is all going. Um, and, and what it's being spent on. And, you know, a forensic audit would overturn a great deal of things that we need to take a look at. So I would be totally supportive of that also. And obviously the voting thing is an issue for all of us, so. Thank you. Mr. Hoover. Art already mentioned it tonight that we need to do an audit. We're gonna find a lot of savings if we can do an audit. And uh, if we're gonna do one, well, let's keep doing them. Maybe every three or four or five years and uh, make sure it's, habit that it's done at the county so that everybody knows where every dollar is being spent. The other thing I would mention is, boy, if we went back to paper ballots, just think of the money we could save, all those computers. Maybe we can get them half price to somebody else. Thank you. 
Thank you, panel. So we'll go now into our closing statements. I'd like to start with you, Tracy, and you, each of you will have two minutes. Okay, I'm looking very much forward to the first day after I'm sworn in because the first order of business we need to do is elect our chair, Commissioner Herman. After that, after that, I'm going to request some agenda items. One, to review the organizational chart of Washoe County so we could go through there and clean out the dead wood. The other thing is I'm going to ask for an agenda item to have our county code amended to put in voting procedures for our elections because there isn't any in there right now and to remove the, excuse me, registrar position and returning that office back to the clerk's office. So that's my checklist so far. And then of course we can continue on to the uh, CARES campus. I'd like to also discuss about as far as any further building permits out in Northern uh, Pyramid Highway that those be put on a pause until our infrastructure gets caught up. Am I, am I still on? Anyway, and then, uh, and we definitely need to get something done with Highland Ranch. There's actually room for two lanes there to turn left. I do not know why they will not make that other lane a left-hand turn to get off of Highland Ranch onto North Pyramid Highway. I know they have plans for an interchange there, but they said that's not for another 10 years. We can't wait that long. And, uh, and then just even further on past that, we need to get um, the Nevada Department of Transportation. It doesn't have any plans to do anything with that road. So we need to come up with alternatives for that. Thank you. Short and sweet, first I'd like to thank my opponents here up on the dais for bravely sitting and enduring these great questions, as well as the crowd, red move, I appreciate it. Um, I think that it would have been nice to have the sitting commissioner up here debate with us, but that wasn't the case tonight. Uh, hopefully you've learned more about me this evening, and I can't thank you enough for allowing me to stand and share my message with all of you tonight. It was brought to my attention that if I were elected, I would be the force first former public safety official to serve on the Washoe County Commission. I have literally worked with elected officials at all levels of government. I can assure you that my overwhelming experience in public safety would serve me well as I establish my campaign priorities of public safety, our veterans, our seniors, the homeless situation, as well as infrastructure, those infrastructure challenges amongst other important topics, voting, another one of them. I said it before and I'll say it again. Action speaks louder than words. There's a lot of work to be done and positive changes to be implemented. And we, and I mean we, as a team can get it done, not I. We'll expose corruption and rely on the most important principle of all, and that's to always do the right thing no matter what. Thank you and God bless. I want to take the opportunity also to thank Red Move and, and for the opportunity to come out and speak tonight and also to all of you who came and stayed through this evening listening to all of we people speak. Um, I, I, I stand with a lot of the people who talked earlier. I, I'm not a politician. I'm a concerned citizen. And I got involved on the county commission because I was concerned about some of the stuff that the county was doing. And I continue to be concerned about those things. I'm very much in favor of fiscal responsibility, and I believe it's time we need to stand up as citizens and say, government, you're going to be resp responsible and fiscally taking better care of our income, our money. That's our money that you're running on, and I am very strong on fiscal responsibility. I also, as I told you earlier, am very strong on Transparency, I think it's extremely important that we have a very transparent government. We don't have that now, and frankly, we don't have that at any level. So maybe the best place to start that is at the county commission with a grassroots effort of good, strong, conservative Republicans who say time has come to really take our government back. And that's what you'll get with me. I'm honest, I answer your calls, I answer anybody's calls who calls me. I am very much in favor of taking care of the constituents who really have responsibility for this government. And so I ask for your support tonight, and I thank you again very much for listening to us all. This was great, and I also want to tell my 
uh, my partners here on the uh, dais, what a great job you all did, and thank you all very much. Thank you. Well, I would also like to thank the folks that come up here on the dais, and, and uh, we all seem to agree with an awful lot tonight about what needs to change. Uh, when you have a liberal majority at the commission, there's going to be a lot of change if we can get that back and get it back to a conservative. I would harper back to what I've now said three times tonight, and that is the audit. The audit is going to reveal most of their misdeeds. And if we can work on that together, build a coalition amongst the conservatives on the, on the commission, then we should be able to make these changes necessary. And obviously keeping the citizens involved throughout the whole process I think will be obviously tantamount, and it'll allow us to provide the trust and get the trust back into the commission again. So you ask me what the number one goal is? The number one goal is to get trust between the citizens and the commission again. And I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Well, there, there, there you go. I'm the, the moderators, our time member, we personally want to thank you very much for taking, appre we appreciate your time and we appreciate you attending and allowing us to ask you questions and I'm sure that the audience enjoyed hearing your responses and let's give them another round of applause. Didn't they do a great job? It really is hard to be up here and answer. But the other thing is I wanted to compliment our moderators and timer. I think they did an outstanding job. And with that in mind, I appreciate it's past my bedtime. I don't know about yours, but don't forget April 11th here to dinner, and it will be Reno City Council and Nevada State. Assembly and Senate candidates. And May 9th is going to be another debate for Senate and hopefully Amade and Fred against Congressional District. So you can watch yourself on TV. Channel 2 recorded the whole thing. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>